because you you said um, the the comment that I gave you years ago stuck with you, mm. and I'm like, man, I I remember saying it because like it was it was kind of like how I felt. Uh, I do think you're an extremely like talented person, but uh, you were at a point in your life where you were so um, I don't know if the word's right. It was spastic. You were you were like very. Mm. Um, you were like a dart without feathers. It's like you, you had no real direction with it, but you had all this like creative talent, like built up. Mm, yeah. I was and just doing yeah. shit, but it was aimless. It was like a powder keg basically. Yeah. And it's like, man, he is producing things, but like, where is he headed with it? Mm. And he is like, just so full of, of energy and creative talent, but he's like, there's just something there. It's like a little unhinged. Yeah. Yeah. When I felt so like when, the comment we're talking about here is, and I feel like it wasn't even you said it. I feel like you said that you were talking to someone else like older or more mm-hmm. seasoned, like a more seasoned or experienced comic. I don't know. It was some, something like you were talking to someone else and you were telling me that this is what they said. Like, ah, uh, don't worry about him. He'll burn out no. of a heroin overdose by the time he's 30 or something. No, 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 no. I, I, I said it. Oh, okay. Because and it's it's based on that that reasoning of of that there is mm. like, man, he's talented, he's great, but he's gonna burn out before mm. he's thirty if he keeps doing this. Mm. Because you you're making like from an artistic standpoint, great, fantastic stuff. Mm. Um, you're racking your brain all the time. You doing video stuff. You made you you've what made five music albums? Oh, more than that. Like, yeah, I think ten. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, like half of them aren't online anymore but i need um can you give me a copy of cool butt i can't find it online um there's a free band camp it's okay. still on band camp you can download it there because i don't have physical cds of that gotcha. anymore okay perfect. those all sold out perfect you could also emailed me the file open yeah. fine. uh but that 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 is why i said that it was not meant to be a dig it's honestly how i felt oh no and yeah, i didn't yeah. i didn't take it as a dig to me what whatever the context was i just mm-hmm. remember being being out back at dead crow when you said it i just yeah. remember the setting and um it's been it's not like you said it to me and then it just immediately causes it was like huh that's mm-hmm. you know have we even said it what the quote was? Yeah, I said it. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to burn out on a heroin overdose yeah. by the time I'm 30 or, or whatever. I think, like, too, at another point, I had said it like, you know, it's going to be like a fireball or it's going to be like a, a meteor. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. going to be like you are going to burn bright for a few seconds and then it's going to be like, holy shit, what happened? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to burn out at a young age because mm-hmm. of how rapid and chaotic. I'm operating that and it makes a lot of sense to me. And I think that, yeah, it's almost kind of been this sort of thing that I think it was a pretty on the nose and true thing. If I were con- to continue in the direction I was going in. And I think really that direction, what you're describing, I cut down to it as a combination of nihilism and hedonism. Mm-hmm. It's thinking everything's meaningless. And also in that meaninglessness, you know, like, well, what do I chase? pleasure yep you know pleasure in the moment whether that's you know causing chaos with whatever art i'm making chaos being the goal because why the fuck not um and yeah can't get enough weed you want to give me some drinks i'll take them oh you got some fucking mushrooms or some Mm -hmm. acid i'll take this pill yeah yeah well i had some limits i like you know again even at the time i was like no i'll never fucking touch heroin Mm -hmm. Uh, you know not interested in crystal meth or not even cocaine either and and pills very Mm -hmm. like you know the occasional adderall Mm -hmm. um the occasional pain pill or xanax but even then i think i was like "Mm, i don't even want to mess with that so much no Cialis? No, I did get uh, I did get handed some Cialis one time. Because Dude, they're so easy to get. I have some. Because I uh, told an older friend of mine that I was having um, erectile dysfunction issues. Mm-hmm. This was like in 2018. It's a little which re- I, that's I, redundant, isn't it? Yeah. Erectile dysfunction issues. <laughs> some people, erectile dysfunction is a feature. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, it's a feature now. I wish I had it. I wish my erections didn't function, but now do I was you gonna just, say, do you just wake up with like, <laughs> I was going to say, I, I fixed it with diet. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Um, particularly the, uh, I eat raw bull testicle. Rocky mountain oysters. Yeah. Rocky mountain yeah. oysters. Yeah. yeah. I try them. Yeah. Yeah. 
It'd be the first set of balls I had in my mouth. Well, yeah. Even when I was taking it in supplement form, like two years ago is when I started, um, immediately just fucking boners like yeah. mad. And, and that was the thing is like, I didn't, even when I was given the Cialis, I never took it because mm-hmm. someone warned me. They're like, you take that, you become dependent on it for. That's fair. That's fair. I did have a time where I was like probably abusing a little bit mm. and then like a huge problem. And I'm like, Oh, it's not, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, but you can, I, th- I think you like drop out of it. As yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bounce back after not using it for a really long time. Yeah. yeah. It's so, see, that's the thing. They are, um, I listen to some pro wrestling podcasts that have a sponsor. That's like a dick pill. Yeah. yeah. And they, uh, I've, I've advertised for blue chew on here. So blue chew, have you been reading the ones where they're like, Hey, and even if you don't have it, do you just want to put on a show? <laughs> wow. You haven't heard those lately. No, no, no. And I'm like, that's like, that's, that's not how it's supposed to be used. Right. Like, you're Recreational boner yeah, pills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, every once in a while is fine, but like, you know, if you're doing it every day, it's like, I don't why? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, back to the, the heroin burnout. Yes. yes. Uh, comment. Yeah, no, I think it was just a thing that stuck with me in terms of like, because it really wasn't until at least a year or two later that I kind of had this wake, like awakening moment and then started meditating and really paying attention to myself and experimenting with my daily habits and concerning myself with, with health mm-hmm. at all. And... um and of course the the reasoning and motivation behind all of that is because continuing to create things throughout my finite existence is super important to me. And I think that's maybe why yeah. it's it stuck with me is because you know all sorts of insults have been thrown at me my entire life but it's you know attacks at me and I don't give a fuck, you know. <laughs> I don't yeah. give a fuck about me. But that that comment was about no, the one thing that matters to you is your ability to create. That's going to leave you within the next decade. And I'm like, man, I hope he's wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I think at a certain point, like it was just not, again, not something I left that moment thinking about obsessively, but I think it was like, once I started concerning myself with those things, like, Hmm, that comment I think might've been more true than, um, it, you know, and again, thank God I like woke up and changed things because if I didn't, yeah, I think that that comment would have like really been hitting the, the, uh, the thing on the nose there. Yeah. And if it wasn't like, if it wasn't heroin, like I just thought it was going to be right. No, to me, yeah. heroin found just like a silly a exaggeration. Spe- You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, again, I think it was, you know, chasing the derp- dopaminergic release. Yes. Um, to me, that's what I felt like it was why it struck the chord with me. It was like, it's very true. It's hitting the, the hedonistic thing on the, on the nose there. And that's very true of me during that era where it mm-hmm. was, and I, I certainly was not an awful version of that. If I look back at even like my worst times of being just open to drug use, like <clears throat> I, I definitely had my limits mm-hmm. and definitely did not chase like overdoing it. Mm -hmm. And I also felt like part of it was the dopamine release you got from, uh, hostility doing comedy, Mm. like being an anti comic saying the, the things that are going to offend people and make them angry. And I think maybe feeding too much off of, anger and frustration of large masses of people, I think was also like a, a, a variable in there. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's ever just, I don't, it's not that I just like upsetting people. Mm-hmm. It's, I like priority. Number one, I like the challenge of taking the taboo subjects and figuring out how to make a good joke out of them. Mm-hmm. Cause it's hard. It's harder to do that. It's really easy to like the, the to use a taboo subject. It does make one thing easy. It 
grips people's attention. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I use it to grip the attention, but I have to do some difficult work as a writer to figure out how to take that attention and right. transmute it into a laugh because they're already uncomfortable just hearing that subject. So that's the tightrope walk that I'm most interested in. And when I pull that off, that's where the big dopamine, that's where the release is like, oh, fuck. Because it feels good to do a solid set where you're safe. Yeah. But it feels really good to do a set where you're taking extreme risks and they pay off. And um, that's what I was chasing. But on that venture, when I would do that and there would be side casualties of, oh, this person complained or this person's pissed off or this comedian or booker disagrees that you should even be allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. That, if it was going well and that was going on sidelines, it would be like, yeah, you don't like it, do you, bitch? Yeah. yeah. Cause, cause, cause that, that was a little bit of a, it was more like an extra fruit. That's not necessarily gotcha. what I'm chasing, okay. but it does make me happy when like, I know I'm doing it well. I know I'm doing it right. And I know this is true to like who I am. This is my artistic integrity. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, no matter what you do, there's going to be haters, you know, like there's going to be people that hate you for, oh, you don't take risk. You're yeah. in the middle of the road, you know, yeah. it's like the, and it's like, well, I'm me and I feel good about that. So fuck you. It mm -hmm. feels good to kind of <laughs> know that there's people that just uh, hate you probably because they're truly jealous that you're doing yeah. well, you know. I wish and, they'd and, tell me. I love hearing people talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think, yeah, I, I think and I think people think a lot like think that about me. And I think um that a lot of my motivations is just to be Machiavellian mm -hmm. and just to shake it things up. It's like that. No, it's more of just a side thing that happens that I enjoy, mm -hmm. but I'm really after trying to just do something difficult. And, I gotcha. And when, um, the words not coming to me succeeding, I guess succeeding and mm -hmm. doing it a difficult way. It's you making it hard for yourself. God bless. No, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, it's like the the regular way of doing it's not easy. No, it's yeah, not. I'm making a hard thing harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think I just know, like, as much as I would love to be paid and to be financially well off doing comedy. Um. I just know if I were to compromise my genuine sense of humor, which seems what's being asked of me on mm -hmm. like a, that's the big, pre that's the big pressure I'm fighting. Yeah. And there's a, a, just a, a whole um, spectrum of how that manifests. Like there's people that are just on the far end of like, fuck you, you suck. You're not even funny. You've never been funny. It's like, okay, well I know that you're just, angry yeah <laughs> and you just you don't find it funny that's fine and there's people all the way on like the closest end of it that are like genuinely friends mm -hmm. that are just like hey man i want you to do well i think you would do better and you'd get further if you just dialed it back a little yeah and i know that they have genuine intentions but um and it's not that i never dial it back it's not like i, I just never do that because i <laughs> But you have to be the one that chooses to do it. I do. I okay. do have to be the one to choose to do it. And I, um, I think I've gotten better at picking those battles. Um, but you know, and I talked about this recently with someone, I think I talked about it with Brian, but, um, <clears throat> when I started doing comedy during the pandemic, when the, the club was closed and it was mostly just independent shows, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was part of that like first wave of comedians that were still down to do it even in yeah. early pandemic. And so there was not a large pool to, of comics to, to book on shows. So I got almost every show mm. and they were paid shows. So I started making more money off comedy that year than I fucking ever have. Yeah. <laughs> and I was also doing the thing that I really have resisted this whole time is actually repeating my material more for the sake of polishing it and yeah. having, and I also had to do it cause I just were, was consistently getting 20 minute, 30 minute, 40 minute sets. And, um, I wanted to make sure if I was getting paid and booked on this show in this room that we've never done before, I was doing the best I could do to be as consistently good as I had been. That's what I wanted on my show. 
Right, but I just wasn't that, and it was a, a dead crow show that I was on for you know five or ten minutes, and mm-hmm. um, you know you you had me in like the twenty sixteen, seventeen, eighteen era where I was just fucking. I mean, that was to me. I think back at that my golden era where I was just constantly pumping new shit out and mm-hmm. fucking around and making it work more yeah. than I was failing at it for sure. Dude, those mics were so good then. They were like, yeah, like it was packed room every thursday if you got up within the first 25 comics you'd Mm -hmm. you would know if your material worked or not yes Mm -hmm. you had an electric audience Mm -hmm. that was just there um but during COVID, and and so i think i during those years because i almost got banned from dead crow right before pandemic hit and so that had me thinking like "Hmm, maybe i should dial it back because i'm Mm going to lose my ability to go up at all if i you know keep pushing it so that had me thinking, I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna polish things and do these shows and actually like try to give good show and performance. And, and then when, you know, more comics started being comfortable with coming out in the pandemic and mostly everyone was back and then the club opened again, I stopped getting booked, mm-hmm. even though I had like a really solid and kind of polished hour and material, just no one recognized or gave a fuck that I finally listened Mm-hmm. And did what they've all been asking me to do. And that just made me go, okay, fuck you. Mm-hmm. Like I did all this work and, and I learned from it and I got experience out of it. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm a better comic for it. But, um, as far as like the, you know, and this is the beginning of the riff I told you earlier. Just, it yeah. just felt like you guys just don't like me cause I don't fucking party anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm just not the same I don't share the same ideology as you guys, like on like a social and personal level. You never invite them out to eat raw meat. <laughs> I wasn't eating raw meat quite that. Oh, okay, but I, gotcha. I was increasing my meat intake. Um, so yeah, it just, it just seemed like a thing of <clears throat> this silent, secretly hating me that was just coming to the surface. Mm-hmm. Um, that was just like, seeing through people and that was another thing too i'm sure you know it's just a lot of people in the comedy scene are very like trying to play the social politics yeah and they're very fake mm-hmm. they're not they don't like you or they're not as friendly to you as they're pretending to be yeah and um <laughs> i just feel like in these more recent years i've been so aggressively honest mm-hmm and and confrontational mm-hmm. and things like when I like see someone being fake or bullshit, I'll like yeah. just confront them immediately and they do not like that. Yeah. And I like that they don't like that. <laughs> and so I think some of it, this kind of thing is my own doing of being like, you fucking fake bitch. I was like, why are yeah. you even acting like we're cool right now? You were just saying this shit the other day. acting like, that's a fucking joke. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, so it's, it's it's interesting because like i i think i'm also pretty honest on things and it's like i think a good saying that describes me is like you're not wrong you're just an asshole Mm. because there are definitely better ways to go about like pointing out wrongs uh, on whatever the subject is Mm -hmm. uh and bluntness can can come back to bite you in the ass yeah sometimes um on the other hand uh people have also like told me like hey i value your honesty. Yeah. So it's, it's a two, two edged sword. Is that a saying? It's a two edged sword, two edged sword, double edged sword, double edged sword. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Same thing. Mm-hmm. 